good afternoon. We we'll look at the general principles, okay, of hormones. We we'll look at generally how hormones are secreted, how they are transported, cleared, and the hormone receptor complex. My name is Mr. Siwale Donald. So secretions. Secretion of hormone is due to a stimulating factor. Some hormones are rapidly secreted, like uh, epinephrine and no epinephrine, while others are slowly secreted and they slowly exert biological action, such as thyroxine, a hormone produced by the thyroid gland. So, stimulating factors can either be uh, a molecule, like uh, glucose, it can be an amino acid, this can stimulate hormone secretion. It can also be a psychic factor, like uh, anxiety, stress, mental stress, sleep deprivation. All these are factors that can uh, stimulate hormone secretion. The opposite of stimulation is inhibit. There are also other factors that inhibit hormone secretion. So you find that stimulating factors and inhibiting factors they are important in regulating hormone secretion. For example, how is insulin secreted? We know that insulin is secreted by the pancreatic beta cells, but the most important stimulant of insulin secretion is uh, glucose. So let's run through these steps just to explain how insulin is secreted. First of all, Glucose enters the GLUT2, which is a glucose transporters by facilitated diffusion. It enters into the pancreatic beta cell. So while inside the uh, pancreatic beta cell, there are what you call glucokinases. These are enzymes that uh, converts glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. So in other words, they add the phosphate uh, to glucose. And then the glucose 6-phosphate is uh, oxidized to form ATP. Here we've just simplified the biochemical reactions, but uh, the end product is ATP. So what does ATP do? ATP closes the potassium channels, particularly the sulfonylureal subunit of the potassium channel. Okay, the sulfonylureal subunit of the potassium channels. We we'll learn that in pharmacology. So it uh, closes the potassium channel, causing the pancreatic beta cell to become depolarized. Depolarization is a situation where there is uh, increase in terms of uh, voltage or there is increase in electropositivity inside the cell as compared to outside. So depolarization will open the voltage-gated calcium channel and there will be rapid influx of calcium into the pancreatic beta cell. And number seven shows that there is increase in calcium. Provided there is uh, ATP, there will be increase in calcium. So calcium interacts with the vesicles that contains the hormone insulin. So causing what we call exocytosis. So this is just an example of secretion. So many hormones... For example, the peptide hormones, they are secreted by uh, exocytosis, okay, depending on the type of stimulation. So that is secretion. But in terms of transport, we have a secreting cell, okay, it releases the hormone in circulation until it reaches the target. So there are two ways hormones are transported. They can dissolve freely in plasma. Example, the catecholamines and most peptides and protein hormones circulate unbound. Or they can bound, bound to plasma proteins like thyroid hormones and vitamin D. Okay, so hormones can freely dissolve in plasma. You know that plasma is a water, uh, watery component of uh, blood. So they can dissolve in that component. Just on catecholamines, these are just uh, hormones of the adrenal medulla. They are made up of a catechol, catechol structure, which is a, which is a benzene ring with uh, two hydroxyl. Okay, so that's why it's catechol, it's called the benzene one 
comma two dio. Okay. So no epinephrine is a catecholamine. Epinephrine is a catecholamine. Dopamine is a catecholamine. So you find that these catecholamines are produced in the adrenal gland and also in the brain stem and the brain generally. Okay, you may ask what's the difference between epinephrine and no epinephrine? Okay, there are various ways. Uh, structurally, when you look at their structure, epinephrine has a methyl group. Okay, but no epinephrine, instead of a methyl group, it has a hydrogen atom in their catechol structure. Okay, the other difference is that epinephrine is produced only in the adrenal gland, that is the adrenal medulla. But no epinephrine is produced both in the adrenal glands and also uh, in the brain. Okay, there's also another factor bound to plasma proteins. We know proteins are, I mean, plasma proteins, these are proteins that are found in uh, plasma and they are produced by the liver. For example, uh, there's a plasma protein called plasma um, thyroxine binding globulin, TBG, thyroxine binding globulin. This plasma protein carries thyroxine. Okay. There are other plasma proteins that, such as growth hormone binding proteins. These plasma proteins, they carry uh, growth hormone. So there are various plasma proteins in the in plasma so what's the importance of the hormones being bound to plasma there are several reasons they they serve as a reservoir replenishing the concentration of the free hormone okay they slow the clearance of hormones from plasma they prolong circulating half-life of the hormone the plasma proteins bound hormones are inactive. They cannot diffuse across the capillaries and gain access to their target cell. So what we are saying, if a hormone is bound to a plasma protein, it is inactive. The hormone only becomes active when it is released from the plasma protein. That's what we mean. Now, hormone requires a receptor for them to act. Okay. Hormones require a receptor for them to act. So we said in the earlier studies that the receptor is a biological transducer that converts the chemical signal in the hormone into some physiological response. Okay, so a hormone requires a receptor. When a hormone binds to a receptor, we call it a hormone receptor complex or a ligand receptor complex, which induces various changes or reaction in the target cells, which we call transduction. Now, what about hormone disposal? The hormones, they have a lifespan in the circulation, so some of them are released. The target cell uptake, there's, there are three ways. There is target cell uptake and intracellular degradation. Okay, target cell. The same cell uh, which has received the hormone can degrade it. For example, proteins and amine hormones, they are, degra uh, they are degraded when a hormone forms a hormone complex. So degradation, first of all, should happen when a hormone forms a hormone complex. That's when the complex is internalized and degraded okay but for hormones like the steroid hormones yes for them to be degraded they need to form a hormone receptor complex but that hormone receptor complex should bind to a chromatin for degradation to occur if you remember chromatin this is just a mass of genetic material which is composed of dna and proteins that condenses to form chromosomes so what we are saying that for protein and amine hormones, they are internalized by the target cell where they are degraded, okay? And the, for the steroid and thyroid hormone, the hormone receptor complex has to bind to a chromatin before degradation can occur. Another way hormones are degraded is uh, metabolic degradation and inactivation, mainly which occurs in the liver, okay? So here, metabolic degradation involves a lot of uh, enzymatic processes, such as proteolysis, 
okay some of them are decarboxylation reactions oxidation reduction reactions uh, methylation and many others this is a very important uh, place where hormones are degraded the, the liver you find that almost all hormones are degraded by the by the liver okay so urinary or biliary secretion so this is associated with their point two once the hormone has been degraded they are secreted okay from the liver into bile okay bile is stored in the gallbladder during fasting and then when somebody's uh, eating it is discharged into the small intestine and some of the metabolites are released are removed as fecal matter okay so these are the three ways hormones are degraded but uh, it's important just to know that the liver plays a very important role in uh, clearance or disposal of hormones now location of receptors the receptors they are located this diagram shows where the receptors are located it's on the cell membrane especially for protein hormones and catecholamines the receptors are located in other ways the water soluble hormones they have their receptors located in the cell membrane for the thyroid hormones you find that there are receptors they are called nuclear receptors because they are located on the nuclear membrane steroid hormones receptors usually are found in the cytoplasmic cytoplasma okay so this is where receptors of various classes of hormones are located these are lipid soluble hormones they can easily penetrate the phospholipid bilayer but for the water soluble uh, hormones they cannot easily penetrate the uh, the phospholipid so example of a receptor is a g protein coupled receptor which are the largest and most diverse group of uh, receptors in the eukaryotes okay this this cell surface receptor acts like an inbox for messages in form of light energy peptides lipids sugars and proteins so the classical role of the uh, gpcr is to couple the binding of agonist to the activation of specific heterotrimeric g proteins leading to the modulation and downstream effect effector proteins okay this is just an example of the g protein okay on a is just showing you the three-dimensional structure of the, this same receptor b it's just trying to show you how it actually looks for teaching purposes so you can say it has one two three four five six seven uh, hetero uh, trimeric uh, units with the n group there and the c group there very important uh, functional groups so this receptor is called a gpc because it is bound to g protein as you can see the g protein g meaning guanosine diphosphate it has alpha subunit beta subunit and the gamma subunit okay so we won't talk much about this but just pause a bit and try to appreciate the structure of this receptor when we look at the mechanism of hormonal action we'll try to elaborate more on this okay so these receptors should be regulated there are two ways receptors are regulated their numbers increases or decrease in various conditions when the numbers decrease is called down regulation down regulation occurs when the hormone is in excess okay and up regulation occurs when the hormone is deficient there is up regulation of uh, receptors they become numerous so this is where i end look out for more videos so this is a um, video we are just looking at generally how hormones are our hormones are secreted how hormones are transported general receptors of hormones and how hormones are degraded okay thank you very much